As always, the cowardly villain awaits within his lair. But no steel walls can protect him from the sin. Quiet. Aha. We'll take the fiend by surprise with a swift, stealthy strike from the shadows. Not if you keep screaming. Do you understand what's happening here, old chum? I am confused, Shroud. How did we come to be so far from the streets of Boston, where we are needed most? I always meant to bring Sean here, someday, when he's older. And this place isn't... <clears throat> it isn't suitable for children yet. <laughs> we fight to make a better world for others to inherit. Heroism must be its own reward, friend. Yeah. Mommy's a hero. <laughs> Let's go kill one last bad guy, and then go home. Multiple enemies ahead. He's got the cloning machine up and running. They smell strange. Not regular people smells. Hey, Vault Girl. Sounds like he's got a bunch of defective clones in there with him. I know. Ugh. I haven't seen this many naked weirdos in one room since my bachelorette party. I don't see your cyborg guy anywhere. Primary target isn't in sight. And we don't even know what kind of ordinance he's packing. A minigun. Chambered in 44 Magnum. Daisy's old body? When I first arrived in Nuka World, the cyborg ambushed us. He was disguised as a herbologist, but I recognized his face and the gun he used. Only got away because he drew the attention of a bigger fish. That was after I took Daisy's brain out of the gun. Apparently guns don't need brains to work. I am still a bad dog? No, it's not your fault, sweetie. Right? Edna, I wanted to see how the D.O.G. behaved in her new body before I told you all this. We can trust her. Your turn. What happened in the glowing sea? Now is not the time for more stories. We need to revise our tactics. Intel. How you escaped is important. How'd you trick him? I didn't do anything. When we went to the glowing sea, he didn't even bother with a radiation suit. He thought his cybernetics would protect his organic brain from the radiation. His clones got sick. Then he started acting confused. He didn't know I had my Ranger armor rad shielded, so I pretended I was just sick as they were when the clone guarding me stumbled. I tried to grab Daisy, but her brain jar broke off from the rest of the gun. I held on tight and I just ran into the dust and kept running. You saved me from the bad man. I only got away because I was stronger than I looked. Rangers are supposed to strike fear in the hearts of their enemies, not lull them into a sense of false security. Do you know the first thing I ever heard you say? I don't know. Probably shut up. You are exactly as dangerous as you look, but our cyborg is arrogant. Can't see other people's strengths or his own flaws. We might be able to bait him. Hey, Vault Girl, you any good at getting under people's skin? Another dud. What's wrong with this machine? Garbage in, garbage out, as they say, villain. Boys, show me you're good for something. You are all in violation of Nuka World hygiene regulations. No shirt, no shoes, no mercy. of our dead <laughs> stalwart hero. Oh, a screaming robot with a machine gun. That's a clever distraction. Oh, the little overboss who got the doors open for me. I was expecting that ranger and her boyfriend. Shouldn't you be out there running your raider gangs? I decided to kill them all instead. Turns out, 
I don't like raiders and slaves, and megalomaniacs who build armies of horribly deformed monsters. Ugh. Deformed, except for you, honey. Despite their... flaws, my clones have you outnumbered a hundred to one. And all you have is a freeze ray and a dog. Put down your gun and I'll ask them to kill you quickly. Hmm, seems like your cloning machine isn't all it's cracked up to be. Unless it isn't a problem with the machine. Could it be a problem with the DNA? I'm perfect. My DNA is pure strain human from the vault. Been exposed to any radiation recently? I. Clone synth cyborgs, when will you people learn that the only way to make life is the old-fashioned way? All of them. Failures. Freaks. None of you are worthy of me. Wait for it. Monster. Now. Nice effort, Ranger, but your plan had one fatal slip. These old sentry bots always overheat in combat. Yep, leaves the fusion cores exposed. Looks like you could still recover the brain. The NCR wants to try again. Oh, he might have gone on living. Next time I take a vacation, I'm going somewhere exciting. Does Las Vegas still exist? Although her mission was accomplished, Tanner was in no hurry to report to her superiors. She traveled with a storyteller for some time. Eventually, she did turn west and walked towards the setting sun on a long road back to the new California Republic. Daisy was happy to have legs and a tail again. She bit many bad people and chased away strangers who came too close to her mommy. She remains a good dog and is allowed on the couch. The storyteller learned all the tales that the Commonwealth had to offer. He was eager to find new audiences who had yet to hear about the Vault Dweller, Harold, or Gary. He walked the wasteland, uncovering secrets left behind by great heroes and their companions. Every now and then, he had an adventure of his own. The Shroud Bot lay broken and forgotten in the ruins beneath Nuka World. His brief life filled with confusion and pain. His heroic sacrifice was its own reward. Death came for him, and loneliness was his shroud. The sole survivor of Vault 111 could have become Nuka World's Wasteland Warlord, ruling a raider empire from her throne at Fizz Top Mountain. Instead, she chose to return to the Commonwealth and resume her search for Sean. In time, she was reunited with her son. But that is a story for another day.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds of all ages, shapes and sizes, that is a wrap on season four of the Fallout Storyteller. We hope you've enjoyed your stay with us in this very nerdiest of corners of the internet. Special thanks to Courtney Taylor and Wes Johnson for lending their voices for this charity project. Anytime we get to collaborate with these folks is an absolute honor, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys were, were showing them some love in the comments and, and on Twitter if you haven't already. So, now, to answer the big question, what is next? That season finale had a little finality to it, didn't it? For those of you who have been with us for a while now, you know that we like to break up seasons of The Storyteller with a hiatus where we outline and begin writing the next season. Well, we're not gonna do that this time. Nope, we are going bigger. For a while now, we've been bouncing around the idea of making our very own machinima-style Fallout movie. What if we crafted our own lore and left it somewhere in the wasteland for our storyteller to uncover? What if we allowed our elite team of level 80 Fallout lore nerds build their own story? That is the spirit of RPGs after all crafting your own stories. For those of you who have never seen the awesomeness that is Nuka Break, the art of fan fiction has come a long way in the Fallout community in particular. We've dabbled a bit here and there in the past, but for our next project, we want to dive all in and contribute our own spin to it, our own storyteller spin to it. As a matter of fact, we've already been working on this project for two months. Surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the Nuka Break of the Shoddy Cast. But you know, with machinima instead of live action, because that's what we do best. And it's cheaper. Much cheaper. What we're gonna do is take all the things we learned from making the storyteller for the past three years, and we're gonna pump those experience points into the most ambitious project our team has ever undertaken. Unlike regular seasons of the storyteller though, we're going to be filming it as a movie that will be released first to Patreon donors, then broken up into parts and released on YouTube for everyone to enjoy. Our roster for the project already includes two writers, a film artist, a lore consultant, graphic artist, a director, and a whole slew of to-be-announced voice actors. What we'd like to add to that lineup is a set designer, an animator, an original music composer to mix some Fallout-inspired tracks. Now, I'm a realist, so I know we can't really afford everyone I would hope to get on this project, but that's where you can come in, if you want. Today, if you visit Patreon, we added a ton of new rewards. And the best part is, they're all linked directly to our new Fallout Unity project. Donate as little as $1 a month, and you'll not only help us make the best Fallout fan film we possibly can, but you'll get access to a ton of exclusive rewards that we put a lot of thought and effort into, such as bonus commentary, behind the scenes looks, and some storyteller audio logs to tide you over while you wait. You guys have heaped a tremendous amount of support on us over the years, and I hope that you think we've honored that with some pretty awesome content. If you want to donate some caps to our latest project, I would be truly humbled by that, but as always, don't feel you need to. The main content itself will always be free. That is YouTube. Merely clicking on our videos and re-watching old episodes helps our continued survival as creators. Make no mistake, this will be the most ambitious project that the guys and I have undertaken yet, so we'll announce the release date the moment we have a trailer to post on the ShoddyCast. In the meantime, do yourself a favor by subscribing if you haven't already and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. It helps keep you in the loop on our latest videos and upcoming projects. Our storyteller fans are what make this channel what it is. And for that, we are truly and unabashedly grateful to you. Stay hungry, stay tuned, and we'll see you for our next story to tell.